Yes, God has a physical body. Um, I'm holding something here in my hands that is of utmost holiness. I'm sure that you are just in awe of it already, and you don't even know what it is yet. What is it? It's part of the Baptist Confession of 1689. <gasps> oh, you don't say. Yes, I do. Um, <laughs> had a guy posting some comments. Uh, Caleb Wilson was the name. And um, I th he's a street preaching evangelist type of guy or something, I think. And he goes to Charles Lawson's uh, satanic little cult building there, his Catholic Baptist cult. And um, he brought up this thing. And I've heard this before from other Catholics. And they say, Catholic is Baptist and Catholic combined. You'll see why I say that in just a minute. But they'll say, you need to, you know, my, my you know, greatest way to, to, to say my statement of faith or whatever you want to say is, I follow the Baptist Confession of 1689, the confession there, the Holy Confession, you know. Um, and I've heard this. And to me, I don't care. This is my standard, King James Bible. Um, well, yes, but there, there has to be a confession of faith and whatever, your statement of beliefs and whatever. Well, okay, making a statement of beliefs is fine. I have one on my website. That's okay. But you run into danger when you start to say, I have this special confession of faith and the whole deal, and it's sort of a this holy book and this holy book. There's two of them. And I get to kind of decide between the two which one has the right authority. That's Catholicism, okay? Divine tradition, sacred scripture. That's Catholicism. And the Baptists pride themselves, and I literally mean pride, they pride themselves in saying, we are not from the Catholic Church. We are not part of the Protestant Reformation. Um, yes, they are. Uh, yes, they are. Yes, you are if you're a Baptist. So you should be looking at the 1689 Baptist Confession of Faith and whatever. So I thought, well, okay, I'll go check this thing out. The other day I was looking it up and typed it in, found a PDF of it, and uh, went down to the Trinity thing, and I started reading this, and I thought, wait a second here. Um, this is quite heretical. And this is why a lot of these Baptists, they get so upset at me and they say this Godhead doctrine, my book right here, the Godhead doctrine, um, this is just a heresy. Dethinger is a heretic because he denies the Trinity. Uh, and I've always said, you know, that's kind of a strange thing because Godhead is in the King James Bible. Trinity is not. And they say, well, Trinity and Godhead mean the same thing. No, they don't. No, they don't. You cannot find Trinitarian... Uh, wording and every phraseology in the King James Bible. Okay, I'll go over it one more time for the Trinitarians. There is no Trinity. There's no Trinitarian. Um, tripartite, that's not there. Uh, God the Son is never said in the King James Bible. God the Holy Spirit's never said in the King James Bible. Um, persons, in reference to the Godhead, never in the King James Bible. There's no divine essence. Okay, uh, that's seven different things there that they use that's required in the Trinitarian speech um, that doesn't appear in the King James Bible. So I'm a heretic for rejecting traditions of men, apparently. Uh, that sounds very Catholic to me. You'll see why I said that in just a minute. Um, so I'll put this up on screen here for you. Chapter 2 of God and of the Holy Trinity. The Lord our God is, list a bunch of things there, without body, parts, or passions. Huh? Uh, the Lord our God is without body, parts, or passions? Really? And see, what they do is they put a whole bunch of, you know, the text up here, their writings, and then they just jam a bunch of scriptures down below. That's not the way you're supposed to do it. You say certain things, and then you give the book, chapter, and verse right behind that statement. But they just throw a bunch of scriptures down there, and all oh, you're just, it's in there. Don't worry about it. Just right there. Just read your confessional and, and things. Uh, huh. Um, but I'll show you this real quick. Before we continue, this one will be a real shock to you. Jump down to paragraph 3 there in chapter 2. It says, down here at the end of it, which doctrine of the Trinity is the foundation of all our communion with God and comfortable dependence on Him. Our communion with God. You say, well, that means all the Baptist churches. No, actually, it means all the Catholic churches. 
say, oh, now, come on, Brother Brian, you're going too far. Really? Okay, let's look down at the, this part here in the Baptist Confession, and we're going to look under the title of church. Look what it says here. Do you see the word Catholic right there? All our communion there. Um, they're Catholic. The Baptist Confession of 1689 is Catholic. You say, no, no, okay. oh, you're so stupid, Denlinger. Oh, you obviously don't understand. The word Catholic simply means universal. It says it right there. Just keep reading the context. Yeah, well, funny bunny, um, I know that. But you see, uh, there's no word Catholic in here. There's no word universal in here. There's no universal church in terms of uh, that spelled out that way or Catholic that spelled out that way. All right? I know what it means. All right? And the Roman Catholic Church uses the word Catholic the same as the Baptists do. So there's no scripture, but the Catholic Church uses it before the Baptists use it. Oh, the, the original Christians were called Catholic. Proof. And if there were groups of original Christians in the first or second century or something, uh, somehow, and they picked up this Greek philosophical term of Catholic, uh, which was there before the New Testament was written, by the way. Um, yeah. But they picked up this term Catholic, and they applied it to themselves, and they were in sin. They were adding to the scriptures. There's nowhere in the Bible that says we're supposed to call ourselves Catholic. So when the Baptist confessional says all of our communion, the Trinity is all our communion, they are literally saying the identical thing that's in the Catholic Catechism, which I've shown in other studies. That's the central core part of Christianity. In order for your church to be considered legitimate by the papists, you actually have to prove that you use the Trinitarian formula in baptism. I did a whole video on that. And if, the, if you use, baptize the name in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and it's you know, by immersion or by sprinkling or whatever, then you are considered legitimate by the Roman Catholic Church because you hold to the Trinity. The Trinity is the basis for all of the universal church's communion. That's what they're saying. You see the problem? Well, no, but see, uh, Denlinger, you stupid heretic, um, we can call ourselves Catholic. We are Baptist and Catholic. Okay, um, go down the street. Somebody comes up to you and says, hey, what religion are you? I'm Catholic. They won't say, oh, you're part of the universal church. They'll say, oh, really? Okay, so you're, you know, you're into the Pope and the Vatican and the Mass and all the other stuff. They're going to think that you're a Baptist or something, an independent fundamental Baptist. No, they won't. You say the word Catholic, the lost world knows what that means. Fill out Catholic on some form or something. Oh, that just means the universal church. Please. Um, no, Baptists are Catholics. They're another one of the little prostitutes of the mother whore, right? Daughters of the whore, of the harlot. That's what the Baptists are. You know, it's funny because over the years I've seen this thing and I came out of the Baptist system, you know, and, and you go through this whole thing of, I don't want to speak against the Baptists because there were some good people in it and all this other stuff, even though they're most of them, the vast majority, unless they're really, you know, an elderly person that's really ignorant and they don't understand but most of the Baptists understand that they're living a lie. You corner them, you say, okay, church building New Testament, where's it at? Well, I know, brother, I know, it's not really in there. Where's the Sunday best at? Well, I know, brother, it's not really in there. And they, they keep doing it. And the weird part is there's cover-ups in the Roman Catholic Church and there's cover-ups in the Baptist churches. The Catholic priests molest children. The Baptist pastors molest children. Actually, he was dealing with a brother the one time, and I asked for prayer and everything else. We even raised some money to help the guy's law, you know, lawyer expenses because his Baptist pastor was raping, well, molesting, I should say, uh, his twin eight-year-old daughters. And the congregation got upset at this brother because he brought it out and went to the police about it. Well, we should have been able to handle this within the church. You shouldn't have gone to the law. Are you kidding me? And this happens all the time within the Baptists, just like within the Catholics. I wonder why. Maybe because they're part of the same system. Maybe, just maybe. And you get the man worship, you get the, you know, all the different stuff. You have to be part of the Baptist church. And if you're not there every Sunday, oh, oh, you know, same thing with the Catholics. Oh, they're different though. No, they're not. They're both Trinitarian. They're both heretics. 
But what's this thing about, you know, the Lord our God is without body. All right? He has no body. I'm going to give you the scriptures, a bunch of them here, and I'd like you to, if I don't fill in a few or whatever else, put them down in the comments, other ones that you can think about. Um, to refute this ridiculous nonsense. And again, remember, 1689 Baptist Confession. You're going back to a time when Catholics were still persecuting Christians. Why would you call yourself Catholic in your confession of faith? Oh, you have to follow the Nicene Creed and everything else. And it's funny too because I flipped out a while back because, you know, a couple of years ago when Charles Lawson came out and flat out said that uh, Constantine, you know, he was a saved man. He was a saved man. I don't know if he'll be in heaven or not, but he was a saved man. You know, it was kind of, what? That's a contradiction. No, it's not actually if you're a Catholic, you see, because you can call somebody saved and yet not know if they're going to get to heaven or not. Because if they died in a state of grace, maybe they'll get there. And maybe if they spend enough time in purgatory, they might get there. And I don't really know. He's a papist. These Baptists are papists. They're Catholics. They add their traditions to Scripture and then stand there in the pulpit and lie right to your face and say, we're Bible believers in all matters of faith and practice. They're lying to you. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. He's without body. How in the world do you get that? Justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, received up in, believed on in the world, received up into glory. God's without body. He doesn't have a body. You say, well, well, that's talking about Jesus, God the Son. Well, then you have two different gods. Well, they're two different God titles, but they're one God. You see, the Trinity thing, what it is, it's a, it's a confusing philosophical system that doesn't actually work out when you logically deduce the thing. You look at the thing and you say, okay, wait a second, this doesn't make sense, that doesn't make sense. And you know what these devils do? They say, that's precisely the point. It's not supposed to make sense. <laughs> Great is the mystery of godliness. Uh, we'll add a bunch of philosophical terms and things and combine paganism and whatever else with biblical titles, and then we'll say, you know, there, that's what it is. That's the Trinity. So it doesn't make any sense. It's not supposed to. The fact that it's confusing to you means that it's correct. When you call them out, oh, you heretic, you. Colossians chapter 2. Let's talk about philosophy here. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. The Catholics are at least honest enough in the catechism that they actually admit it's a philosophical origin, the Trinity. It's a philosophy. It's all that, all that it is. But the Baptists are such liars, they won't admit to that. They'll say, oh, no, it's backed up by the Scriptures. That's what the Scriptures teach, you heretic, you. You denied the Trinity, you're outside of Orthodox Christianity. Mm -hmm. No, it's philosophical in its origin. At least the Catholics are a little bit more honest. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after... Christ, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. I've been over that scripture so many times, and it just makes perfect sense. In Jesus Christ is all the fullness of the Godhead. There's no part that's lacking there. The body, the soul, and the spirit is in Jesus Christ. It's one God composed of three parts. Oh, he's without parts according to the Baptists there, the Catholics bunch of satanic nonsense. You better repent of that stuff. You need to get out of the mind control cult of the Baptist system, just like a Roman Catholic needs to come out of their mind control cult, or a Lutheran, or a Methodist, or whatever else. You have to come out of that mind control. Get away from it. Confess your faults and your sins to God and say, I'm sorry, God, I fell for it. I was in there. I was openly deceiving people. I'm sorry. That's the issue here. But these guys in their pride, oh, I will not, I will not back down. I will die a Baptist. Uh -huh. James chapter 3, verse 9. We're just hitting some of the big verses here to disprove this whole satanic trinity. 
James chapter 3, verse 9. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. The similitude of God. I am made after the similitude of God. God didn't just say, hey, I don't really know how we're going to make man. I'll just kind of guess or something. There's three parts to God and yet one person. Three parts to man and yet one person. First Thessalonians chapter 5. We'll go there. Yeah, you Trinitarians, every single time you watch me, you're becoming that much more accountable. I hope you realize that. You're not going to be able to duck it. You stand before God someday and you say, Why well, just, I never heard. Lord will say, You dirty liar, you. Depart from me, cursed. You're wicked. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. We ready to count here? Okay. Get a crayon ready, Trinitarians. You might be able to use your fingers, but I don't want to strain your fingers. They're, they're not really all that strong, I'm sure, because you just spend all your time on a keyboard and you don't really know anything about manual labor and whatever, you preach your boys. I understand that. So if your fingers start to hurt from going like this, counting one, two, three, just use your crayon. Okay? Right? Here we go. <laughs> 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you, holy, and I pray God your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's try it again. One, two, three. And yet it's just you. Did you have enough time to write that down with your crayons? Okay, you don't have to use three different collars, okay? You can use the same collar and still get a gold star on your paper, Trinitarians, Trinitarian Bathlicks, okay? Why is this stuff so hard to get? That's the thing I don't understand. It blows my mind. The Bible's so clear. And you get this, this bunch of pharisaical junk, and it comes out, God is... Holy and omnipresent and omnipresent. Well, of course that stuff, but they get into all these words that aren't even in Scripture. Um, whose subsistence, subsistence in, is in and of himself. Chapter and verse, subsistence, infinite in being and perfection, whose essence cannot be comprehended by any but himself. A most pure spirit, invisible, without body, parts, or passions. Lying. Absolutely lying, right to people's faces. Since 1689, Baptists, liars since 1689. I'm sure probably before then as well. Leviticus chapter 26. God is without body. Well, I'm sorry that you have some little figment of your imagination there, some little floaty little thing that poofs around or something that doesn't have a body. It's kind of a problem. Leviticus chapter 26. You're insulting my trinity. <laughs> Leviticus 26, verse 11 through 13. And I will set my tabernacle among you, and my soul shall not abhor you. God speaking, my soul shall not abhor you. He's talking about the Father. That's what the Godhead is saying right there. And I will walk among you. God the Father will walk among you and will be your God and ye shall be my people. I am the Lord your God which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt that ye should not be their bondmen and I have broken the bands of your yoke and made you go upright. Speaking about God the Father and he says, I will walk among you. Uh, how can you walk if you don't have a body? Well, it's talking about God number two. Okay. Satanist. John chapter 14. When did this happen? When did God walk among men? John chapter 14, verse 6 through 11. Again, such an easy thing to prove. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You can't come to the soul of God without first coming and seeing the body. Not very difficult. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also, and from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. 
How can you see a spirit? If God the Father is a spirit, like the stupid Trinitarians teach, you have the Holy Spirit's a spirit, God the Father's a spirit, and Jesus has another spirit. So that's three different spirits within God. Or no, it's actually seven spirits, or maybe it's, you know, each one has two and one has three, or, uh, you know, messed up. You've seen him. How's that possible? Can you see my soul right now? No. Can you see my spirit? No. Could they have seen the soul or the spirit back then? No. Why would Jesus say you've seen him? Verse 8. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Good Trinitarian Bathlick, apparently. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He doesn't say you don't you haven't known my father. You don't know me, Philip? Philip says, show us the father. And Jesus says, you don't know me? <laughs> Pretty obvious. He that hath seen me hath seen the father. And how sayest thou then, show us the father? Believest thou not that I am in the father and the father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Did the Father have a body? Yes. If the body is Jesus Christ. How can Jesus claim to be God, and the Father be God? If they're separate, in terms of two separate persons, two separate beings, then you have two separate gods, and that's heresy. I mean, if you don't get this stuff, then you're not saved. Just as simple as that. Romans chapter 1. How dare you? You've spoken against the holy confession. Oh. Romans chapter 1, verse 19 through 23. Because that way, that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they, past tense, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds, and four-footed beasts, and creeping things. An image made like unto corruptible man. Huh. Y'all, you mean like the Trinity pictures? Uh, the symbols and things, the trachetra, the three-pointed star, and it symbolizes the Trinity, and you have the Father is not the Son, the Son is not the Spirit, the Spirit's not the Father. You know, is not, is not, is. They're all God, but they're not, you know, the same and whatever in terms of the same God. <sighs> well, then you're telling a modalist. I'm not a modalist. Okay, God doesn't have three separate modes or manifestations. It's three separate parts, like the Bible teaches. And the stupid, idiotic Baptist confessional denies and rejects. And by the way, this Baptist confessional also has a Baptist catechism attached to it. So, I'm going to be getting a copy of it sometime here, and I'll be looking through it and having some real fun with that. Um, the Baptists are Catholics. I believe that for a long time. I preached many years ago. I think it was 2013. I think it was Independent Fundamental Baptist Catholicism. I did a couple studies on that, showing that Baptist practices just come right out of the Catechism. Um, it's just Roman Catholicism. The Baptists are just another daughter of the whore. That's why when you had the whole scamdemic thing, the Baptists shut their churches just like the Catholics did. It's all part of the Universal Catholic Church. Don't you understand? We have to do what everybody else is doing. Uh-huh. So, um, if you want to get a copy of my book, oh, it's what it's all about, whatever. Um, the Godhead Doctrine, I wrote, went through a lot of the scriptures on this issue. And just a thin little book, won't take much of your time to read it. But, um, and I have on the back here, Matthew chapter 11, verse 27, All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father, neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. I have the scripture typed out there on the back. 
Why? Because it's so important to understand. Jesus Christ will not reveal the Father to anybody but someone who's truly saved. And if you're truly saved, you'll understand the Godhead doctrine. You'll understand what the Godhead is and how it all works out. You'll look and you'll say, well, yeah, okay, Jesus is God. The Father is God. They have to be the same. They have to be connected somehow. The book of James says that we're made after the similitude of God. In us, there's three parts. In God, there would have to be three parts. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. It's not that difficult. Uh, can I understand every single little fine aspect of God and how he thinks and whatever? Of course not. Of course not. But just the simple basics of how God works? Yeah, not that difficult. And um, see, the Catholics, they want to push that away from you. They don't want you to have that personal relationship. They don't want you to just be able to understand the Lord and say, yeah, I understand exactly how he's composed, what he's composed of. They want to make it into this infinite, mysterious thing that the priesthood up there has to be able to give you little samples of, but they can't completely explain it or completely, you know. That's why they want to have that there. They want to control you. And um, we're not supposed to have that. God hates that system where you have the priest class ruling over the laity. And oh, we have this special thing, and you know, oh, you can't attain unto this until you've dedicated yourself to me and whatever else and let me control your life. So um, I'll be bringing out some more stuff in the future on this whole Baptist confession of 1689 and um, the Baptist catechism. <laughs> Unreal. Um, but it just... It, my wife, when we first got married, um, we were attending a Baptist church. I shared the sermon last Sunday. Um, and I was, you know, hardcore Baptist and trying to keep the system going and everything else and lying. I knew I was lying. Uh, I was in sin for going back to that place. And she, we left the one week and she said, you know what? She said, that church is nothing more than a corrupt uh, Catholic cult. And I, oh, oh now, honey, you know, that, that there are some people there that are saved. I was trying to justify it. And I knew she was right back in my mind. There was the same kind of cover-ups. There was the same kind of elevating traditions above scripture you know, the little clicks and the little, you know, all the other nice little stuff and the, the faithful members and the members that aren't so faithful and you talk about them on Sunday afternoon when you're at the pastor's house eating the meal. I know all about it. I know all about it. So um, I'm glad I'm out of the system. But what you have to realize is if you're a man and your pride is blinding you and you're saying, I am not in a cult, everything's fine and whatever, you have to lower your pride and admit, I've been deceived, I've been tricked, and yes, I am part of a cult right now. And I need to get out of this. And I need to admit to myself that I've been lied to and I've been going along with it. And I need to submit myself to the Word of God, not to confessions, not to catechisms or writings of men. I need to submit to the Word of God. And if you don't, then God help you. Uh, you have a rough future coming. So that is going to be it. Um, I'll put links to the, my book uh, down in the description box. Buy a copy of it. Straighten you out on the whole Trinity versus Godhead doctrine. Uh, if you don't want to buy it, well then watch all my other sermons I've done on it. You'll get the information there. So um, if you have any comments, any other scriptures the Lord's shown to you that prove that God has a physical body, <laughs> uh, contrary to what the Baptists have been teaching since 1689 in their confessional, um, if you can think of any other scriptures that I missed, put them down in the comments section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. That is going to be it. Thank you for watching.